Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Rot McTinker Quest Chest Popping series. We're on episode 17, 16. I, how do I keep forgetting this? I need to check. What are my thumbnails at? My thumbnails are at, uh, no, this is episode 17. Okay, good. Welcome back to another episode, and it's episode 16, 17, Jesus. <laughs> okay, and um, I had a topic in mind for this episode. But I forgot about it because I was planning on recording this a couple days back, but I wanted to get a couple more chests before I did. And now I forgot what I want to talk about, which sucks. Give me a second. Oh, that's right, I remember now. So, what I want to talk about today was on the subject of uh, hedonic adaptation. Now, some of you might know of the hedonic treadmill. White bag, right away, okay, apparently we'll start with that first. But yeah, some of you guys may be aware of the concept of hedonic adaptation or the hedonic treadmill where any sway from good to bad in one's life eventually evens out to a sort of net neutral, right? We sort of get used to it. That's why most of the time, even things that are very amazing for your life, like, like maybe graduating or getting a dream job or getting married and stuff like that, even if those are monumental occasions that you would never ever probably do ever again, an orb of aether! Okay, I'll take it. It's a good start to the video. Eventually you get used to it, right? You get used to change, and it usually applies, unfortunately, mostly to- or some people they believe that it applies only to good change, but I also think it applies to bad. The cool thing is that I initially had the belief that something needs to- in order for something to truly be good, it has to last forever, right? And after like doing a little bit of research on the subject and realizing that the fact that getting used to good things or getting used to something good happening in your life and uh, not really feeling the same kind of gratification from it is a normal occurrence. I actually did not know that there was such thing as a hedonic adaptation. I thought that maybe there was something wrong with me that I was not satisfied with good things after a certain amount of time. But it turns out that it it's a normal thing. We get used to it. It's also, something I think that's probably the main reason why uh, a lot of humans struggle with being happy because it works in both good and bad ways because if something terrible happens to you, your ability to adapt to that change and to come to terms with it, uh, whether it be the loss of a loved one or maybe overcoming a really bad breakup and stuff, eventually people kind of get back to normal. Maybe not exactly the same as when they were before, of course, because, you know, things do have lasting impact, uh, impact. but usually we kind of come to terms with the new reality of our circumstances and our life, so to speak. That applies for both good and bad. But I noticed that there's actually an inherent problem when it comes to that, especially in our day and age, because when I was playing a lot of video games, especially like MapleStory or Realm of the Mad God, where it's a long-term progression, right? And you have a lot of permanent change happening most of the time. Like if you ever get a bunch of 88s or something like that, that is quote unquote a permanent change. I know you can lose a lot of characters. Another white bag, okay. Good, good. Let's uh, open that one first so I don't cut off mid-sentence. What do we get? It's gonna be too wide, right? Oh, another coral trap, okay. Although I think at this point I do have quite a few of them. I don't think I'll ever need it. Jeez, I'm getting a lot of wine cellar tops, so that's actually nice because I can do another giveaway. Not right now, of course. But back to the topic, when I was talking about uh, how I easily become good at things, or mostly with, when it comes to things that I can study up on, like uh, whether academics or video games and such, and I do enjoy progression, right? To me, progression is the ultimate form of uh, enjoyment in that like, not just in video games, but in life. But in a way, that comes at sort of a cost because every time you push yourself to the next level, Whatever existed before doesn't really matter that much to you anymore. Or if it does, it's not to the same degree as before you, you know, reached the next step. And like looking back in life, because as I've probably well established by now, uh, I'm a very nostalgic person. I like to think back a lot, sometimes to my detriment. I often think back at how times were a lot simpler back then and how you know, a pizza party, or like if we had pizza night, that would be the highlight of my whole week, right? But when you get older, you have more access to income, you have more, I guess, opportunities to get pizza and stuff like that. That becomes more of a normal occurrence to you, right? Or a trip to the movies, or maybe uh, going out to eat, 
as a kid, that was like the best time of your life. But when you get older, stuff like that becomes pretty trivial, sort of day to day. I've figured out that that's probably the main reason why a lot of people, uh, whenever they're trying to find lasting happiness, they go mostly for experiences. Because if you look back, the things that you think fondly of, right, when you look back in your life, whether you're 10 years old, 20 years old, 50 years old, 100 years old, or what have you, you don't really think about the times when you've got, uh, let's say, a large amount of material gain, right? Let's say you got a, a brand new car or you bought a brand new house. Those aren't really the things that stay in your mind. It's usually whatever experiences you had, right? Like uh, getting married. I know I just mentioned that like people get used to being married, but usually the experiences that you have with people are the things that you look back on more fondly. Like for me, I really enjoyed family game night when I was younger. We still do it here and there, but obviously not as much as we used to before because we have school and whatnot and everyone's kind of off doing their own thing. It's very rare for my family to gather together, uh, aside from Thanksgiving and Christmas. But usually the days that I look back on most often are stuff that I've done with people that I've had lasting enjoyment with because I look back and I think, oh, the day where I got a really powerful item in MapleStory or day where I got like I don't really think back on oh I got my Omni I got my first Omni those were good times right that was the highlight of my like I don't really think about stuff like that I think more about what I've gotten out of an experience or like something that's happened to me over the course of my entire time playing the game the friends you make the sort of lessons that you learn and I find that great because I've been having sort of an issue with finding quote unquote lasting happiness. I mean, that comes in white bags. I, I, <laughs> oh my god, double white bag, and I actually don't even know what I highlighted over, but okay, we're, we're getting a lot of whites now. I don't think I can talk about anything deep today because we're going to be freaking out about a lot of white bags, I suppose. All right, what do we get first one? Midnight Star. At least it's better than Tomb White. <laughs> I'll take anything other than Tomb White at this point. All right, let's get the next bag. A Tomb White, but it's the best one, so I'll take it. Do you guys sort of have the same kind of thing too, where whenever you look back on your life, the things that you enjoy the most are not really any material gains or any, I guess, social advances, whether you've gotten, let's say, a job. Like for me, I don't really consider my acceptance to a college to be a big thing for me to look back on because all it, that hasn't really changed my life all that much at least as as of right now but like when i think back on the times when i had let's say my first romantic experience or when even things like for some reason i look back very fondly or not maybe not necessarily fondly but i look back a lot on experiences when it came to personal challenges of mine a lot of the things that you've kind of get used to when it comes to whether if it's good or bad, uh, the things that at least I, I in particular remember the most are the ones that made me realize a little bit more about myself. Whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, like if let's say I've discovered my first, uh, you know, I became more self-confident, like when I first started going to the gym, I felt like that was a really big part of my life because it taught me more about self-responsibility and taking good care of yourself. But even things like my first challenge with, uh, you know, going on my own out in the world or whatever, or having to understand that, like, sort of the romantic uh, impression I had or the romantic viewpoint I had on life was extremely naive. And I had to understand that the world is not exactly what it was meant to be. And the first time, well not the first time, it's sort of a gradual process, but I still to this day have a very hard time trying to accept that my idealism is obviously not a direct representation of how life is, and it bums me out a lot, but at the same time I think it led to a lot of uh, good changes when it comes to self-discovery, since the more I feel like you know, they always say that you should treasure your childhood because your childhood innocence is like the greatest thing you could ever experience and then like as you get older it starts to slowly dwindle and you become more hardened to how the world works and you become more mature. But that maturity usually leads to a loss of happiness and I was trying to figure out if there was a way that you can be 
uh, you know, at peace with yourself because it's still a struggle that I go through on a day to day basis. I try to find out something that gives me lasting happiness and enjoyment. But because of the way hedonic adaptation works, is that everything that happens to you, you're, you just slowly, emotionally, and physically adapt to whatever happens, right? Because that's just an instinct that we've been born with and it helps with our survival. Initially, I hated that. I thought it was terrible that we couldn't forever be happy about, you know, a gift that we've received five years ago or maybe uh, getting that new job. But I actually think that, like, now that I give a little bit more thought into it, I'm very happy with, not necessarily, that's not the right word, but I actually think it's better that your happiness doesn't last because similar to how one's commitment towards health, one's commitment towards fitness and stuff like that, it's not just like a one-time thing, right? It's not like, oh, I'll do it just once and that's it. Or just like how a relationship is. It's not like once you tie the knot, then there you go, you don't have to try anymore. Like a commitment is something that you renew every single day for as long as you stay in that commitment, right? People don't really understand that. They think that like, oh, it should just be something that you sign once and that's it, right? The deal's done, then move on. But no, that's not how life is. Even for things such as our own personal happiness, it's something that you have to renew every single day. People might consider that to be tedious, but I actually think that is a good thing since maintenance and, you know, keeping up something is the hallmark of any good form of, I guess, practice or any good aspect in life. People work really hard to maintain their, the quality of their work, people may work hard to maintain their appearance, people work hard to maintain their health, and why not the same for one's own emotional, I guess, well-being? It forces you to be more responsible about how the world is around you and how you take the world, and through that you're constantly challenged, you're constantly tested to see whether or not your beliefs ring true. And I believe that while some people may see that as a bad thing, remember how I talked to you guys about how we as humans crave a challenge, right? If there's the moment we finish the first level, we want to go into the second one, we want, we want to go into the third one. It ties in so much with the whole cliche of, you know, it's not about the destination, the life is more about the journey, in that everything you do, you're never, you never reach your destination when you're doing fitness, you never reach your destination when you get married. If anything, you continue on your same journey just with someone else. Now, okay, give me a second, guys. I'm going to pause for a moment here to use up all of my pods because I do have quite a bit. And then I'll meet you guys in about half a second when the transition comes in, but uh, five minutes in real life. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I actually don't, I kind of blanked out with like where I left off, but uh, I, uh, I found something a little bit more as I was thinking about it. And I think I was looking at it incorrectly because we're always focused on trying to find lasting happiness, right? I think that's the wrong way to look at how things are because the only thing permanent in life is impermanence, right? Never, nothing ever stays the same. That's what makes life beautiful, right? Because the whole thing about beauty is that it doesn't last forever. And I think we kind of get the wrong impression with people who are happy because what we do, a lot of people, their goal is to quit their job, retire early, and spend their whole life doing whatever they want, right? Like if you do what you love, then you never work a day in your life. I always thought that they were just permanently happy. They could just sit back and do absolutely nothing and be happy. That's that's just how it is. It's like a, something that you unlock, right? But no, that's not what it is at all. The reason why people, even after they retire or like, you know, the reason why people who are happy get up and work every day is because they're maintaining that happiness. They wouldn't be happy if they just sat at home all day and did nothing but play video games or watch TV or whatever. They go out there and they do stuff. Or that's why people just don't sit on their asses and do nothing. Except get an Echo's Prism. I actually am okay with that. I'm not a Trickster fan, but I do enjoy the Echo's Prism, so I'll take it. They go out there and they continue maintaining that happiness. That's probably the reason why we humans struggle so much with finding something that lasts because we're looking at it incorrectly. The whole point of life is to avoid complacency, right? Because when things are not in motion, they slow down and then eventually they rust or rot, right? Like if anything remains still for too long in life, it either dies 
or it rots. Like if you don't take care of a house, if you don't maintain it, then the house will collect bugs and plants and dust and you know mold and whatnot. If you don't take care of your body, then it'll become weak, brittle, maybe even in some cases it'll become overweight, right? If you don't take care of your looks, your appearance, you know, your skin will start to sag. Uh, you will have uh, poor health uh, when it comes to like, you know, poor derm- uh, what's it called? Dermatolo- dermatological health? I don't remember. <laughs> you basically, like, if you don't take care of yourself, then you'll never be perfectly healthy. You'll never be, you'll never look your best. And no matter how fit you are, no matter how perfectly healthy one is, they always have to continue to maintain it. And ever since then, I've been trying to look at happiness the same way in that like maybe I was, maybe the reason why I felt like I was so like struggling to find something that lasted or find ha lasting happiness is because there's no such thing as lasting happiness. It's something that you have to renew every single day, just like everything else in life. It's all maintenance. Some people may see that as an inconvenience, but I think that might exactly be the reason why the people who are happy have such a great time maintaining that happiness because that's how we do everything in life, you know? We maintain our health, we maintain our skills, because, you know, if you don't continue practicing, if you don't continue improving, then you will fall behind and you will start to, you know, you'll, your skills will get rusty. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is that for those of you guys who are having a hard time trying to find something that lasts, maybe that's not what you should be looking for, because if you look back, there was never one really defining moment in one's life, if you ever look back in your past, that makes you happy. It's a continuous string of things that you look back on because, you know, when you're in middle school and you look back at, on your days at elementary school, but when you're in high school, you'll look back on your days as a middle schooler and an elementary school uh, student. If you go to college, you look back on your high school days. Like, you never only look back at one point in your life and that's it. You continue to look back at it over time collectively. That's because your experiences are not just one definitive thing. It's something that you build, something that you nurture, kind of like a plant. Over time you water it, sometimes it might fall off, sometimes a tree might collapse on itself, but eventually it builds up and over time you sort of take the harvest from each and every season, and that is sort of what people use to define whether or not they had a fulfilling life. A lot of people that pass away, they look back and they say, I have no regrets. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have regrets, but just like how we don't view one single thing in our life as a permanent source of sadness, we don't look at one single thing in our life as a permanent source of happiness either. Just like how everyone always says, like, you know, all things pa all things eventually pass, you know, if you're going through a hard time, it will eventually pass. Happiness does the same thing. And the goal in life, at least for me, now that I've like thought about it a little bit more, is to maintain that as much as you can. It's not a bad thing to have to maintain something, that's just how life normally is, that's how the world works. But we think of that mostly when it comes to physical aspects, like maintaining our body's, uh, I guess, nutrition, maintaining our body's health, maintaining your uh, house's condition, maintaining your looks, maintaining your uh, craft. All of those are physical things, but even emotional and mental things, maintaining your mental health, maintaining your emotional health. I think that's a better way to look at it because that way, you can look back and think to yourself like, did I do a good job taking care of myself? Or like, people never really look back and think of one single thing as their defining moment in history. They look back across their whole lives. Celestial Blade! Oh my goodness. <laughs> I actually could use another one. We've gotten a ton of white bags today, holy crap. But yeah, people in general, they look back on their lives as a whole, whether or not they've done well with all the time that they spent. No one looks back and thinks, oh, that one time, if only that one time was different. Maybe they might have done that for like, um, if I decided to stop being a teacher and become uh, an actor or something. Sure, there might be people who have instances of that, but generally speaking, when you reflect on your life, you don't think of one single instance in your life. Just like how you handle the present, you shouldn't be looking at just one single thing and like, this is the thing that will make me happy for the rest of my life. Sure. It can make you happy for a very long time. For some people, the highlight of their entire life is marriage, or the highlight of their entire life is opening their own business. But after you open your own business, you have to take care of it, right? You have to maintain it. You have to maintain your relationship with your spouse. You have to maintain whatever good thing comes your way. Even materials. When you get a new car, you have to maintain that as well. Like, all of those things have to be maintained. It's not when you get it, it is there forever. Even things that are quote-unquote supposed to last forever, like memories. 
those are maintained as well because even memories in and of themselves can stale and you don't think of them as like greatly as you used to. To do that, you create more memories. Everything in life is about maintenance. It's about continuing to renew your commitment towards something, your commitment to happiness, your commitment to the ones that you care about, your commitment to your craft, your commitment to your dreams and passions. It's not something that you wake up and you sign one deal on it and there you go, that's like, that's done and you don't have to ever worry about it again. You have to maintain it every single day, every time you wake up, every time you go to the gym, every time you do anything, you renew that commitment. And I think that's what makes life so enjoyable to live because it forces you to be very mindful about everything that you do. And I think the reason why people struggle so much is because they don't believe that life should be a commitment. They believe that life should just be a one and done and that's it. But the very nature of life is change. That's sort of how you kind of go about it. You have to always, each and every day, get up and say, today's a good new day, right? Like, you always have to remind yourself of whatever you do every day. And it's not something that, like everyone always says, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? That applies to all walks of life, not even just whatever, whether you're pursuing your dreams or whether you're trying to work out. So I guess in a sense, I'm trying to do that when it comes to my channel. That I think to myself, oh, I just have to make one good video and there we go, right? I'll have to make one viral video and I'll be all set and done. Sure, it might be lasting a, a little bit of, you know, a quick boost to your popularity, but ultimately, it's not about reaching first place or it's not about being famous, it's about whether you can stay famous, you know? Not just to YouTube, but to everything in life. As long as you just keep working on that, and as long as everyone keeps working on that, then I think that's a good enough cause for you to be happy about what you're doing or how you are in life. Because they always say that no matter how slow you go, it, or it doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you don't stop. I've thought about that quote a lot, and I think only now do I really realize what they mean by that, is that when they say don't stop, they don't mean like, oh, you can't take a break or you can't rest. They just mean never kind of forget that commitment that you give yourself or that commitment that you make towards something that you're going for in life. Okay, um, I've repeated like the same message six times. Oh my god, I, I need to write this down, I swear. I try to keep it unscripted because I want it to be natural and stuff. I don't want it to sound like I'm reading off of a teleprompter, but I find myself rambling kind of the same thing I could be saying in three minutes into like 20 minutes. And I know like I'm still doing stuff on the screen like I'm getting a chest. We had a great run this time around. Uh, let's see, we got uh, quite a few good stuff. We got Celestial Blade, Aether Orb, a Venom Trap, Midnight Star is okay, but I don't play Ninja that much. I think I have like four of these now. Uh, Pyramid's always nice. We got a lot of potions, of course, and a lot of tops. So hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know your thoughts on this too, because I always enjoy listening to discussion. I enjoy reading comments. So. What are your philosophies on when it comes to finding lasting happiness? Do you think that, do you disagree with me? Do you think that there should be things that give you a permanent lasting happiness? Or do you think that life is meant to be something that you always have to maintain because that's how everything is, you know? I'm not entirely, I guess, happier because I know this, but at least I have more peace in, of mind that it's not something that I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong, right? Like, you may be happy one day, you might be upset the next. That's a perfectly normal thing. I think to myself, if good things are happening to me, why am I not happy forever? Why am I only happy for a couple days or a couple weeks? And if I tie that in with hedonic adaptation, just the whole concept of that psychology, along with the fact that maybe we're all trying to find something that's permanent, even though nothing in this reality is permanent, not even happiness. It works both ways too because sadness is not permanent and so therefore your goal is to just try your best to push it back towards the good side as much as you can. And that's probably what keeps us busy and I, I enjoy being busy whether or not it's for something I want to do or something I have to do. It's better than doing nothing. We humans are not meant to be stagnant and to sit around all day. Alright, if you guys enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more of these quest chest opening videos if you enjoy more mellow discussion as opposed to, like, you know, very loud dubstep montages and stuff like that. But thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.